you're going to learn the top 10 body language behaviors that will hurt your credibility. This list is taken from decades worth of research on nonverbal communication and deception. Of course, body language is not an official concept. We're talking about nonverbal communication cues, but people often call this body language. And the bottom line here is that there's absolutely no research supporting the connection between these behaviors and lying. I made a video entirely about that, and I'll link to that video in the description below. The trouble is, many people believe or interpret that these are signs of deception. So people see these behaviors as suspicious. And that means if you do any of these, even if it's purely out of habit, you may be hurting your own credibility and creating the wrong impression, even if you're a 100% honest person. So the question is, do you do any of these behaviors? Number one is a high-pitched voice. And this is not about a naturally high-pitched voice. I don't recommend deliberately lowering your voice, for example. That's not what this point is about. A high-pitched voice on a list like this means that a person has been speaking in their normal pitch, but then they raise the pitch of their voice to a higher level than normal when the subject changes. And that can sound off to a listener. So here I am talking in a normal way, but when you ask me about how a certain project is going, I say in response, the project's going okay, I think we're gonna get it done. So if I use a higher pitched voice like that, some people listening may get the impression that I don't have confidence in what I'm saying, and that can hurt my credibility, my believability. So if you have a habit of raising your pitch like this, just maintain your normal pitch, your normal tone, especially if you're getting a bit nervous about a topic. Number two is an accelerated speech rate. On the one hand, this is similar to using a higher pitched voice than normal. If I'm normally speaking at about 130 words per minute, but when we start speaking about a new topic, I speed up to 180 words per minute, that may draw listeners' attention. On the other hand, when I just speak rapidly in general, People don't tend to interpret that rapid speech as sincere and honest. You may have heard the unfavorable expression that somebody is a, quote, fast talker. That is usually another way of saying that somebody's trying to quickly persuade or manipulate the other person without giving them enough time to think. Speeding up or just generally talking fast is not associated with honesty. So if this sounds like you, instead relax, slow down your pace, and take your time. You'll sound more composed and that will sound more credible. Number three is latency or a delayed response. So somebody asks a question and the other person takes a long time to respond, long enough so it feels like they are stalling. It might only be an extra second or two in some cases, but it can still unintentionally signal that the other person is calculating a response. In the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial, for example, Amber Heard tended to pause for just an extra second before answering some questions. It seemed like she was stalling, trying to think of the right thing to say. That was one of the many small behaviors that created the impression among some viewers that Amber Heard wasn't being honest. My recommendation here is that if you need a moment to think about it, just say that. I know a very honest and thoughtful friend of mine who regularly says, let me think about that for a minute. And he takes a moment and then answers. And that creates a much more positive impression than an unexplained delayed response. Number four is hesitations with fillers. This is another behavior that we see during question and answer style conversations. Instead of just speaking smoothly, the speaker hesitates and use filler words throughout their answer. Ah, uh, ah, uh, well, you know, uh. This is one of the key reasons that some people, including me, had a very strong impression that Bill Gates was not saying all there was to say in his interview on PBS when Judy Woodruff asked him questions about his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. He used a hesitation or filler word every 2.6 seconds. That was way above average and even way above his average use of fillers. He sounded beyond anxious. And I have repeatedly said this, I have no proof that he was lying. That's not proof but those hesitations and fillers sure did not make him sound confident and credible in his answers. If you use fillers, just pause silently instead. Unlike a delayed response at the beginning of a sentence, pausing silently in the middle, or better yet, at the end of a sentence sounds much better than filler words and hesitations. Number five, fidgeting. This could be fidgeting with your hands, 
scratching or rubbing different parts of your body, for example, your collarbone. Think about it this way. If you were a brand new professional actor in your very first role and the screenplay said that your character was, quote, acting nervous, it's very likely that one of the ways you would act out that nervousness in the script is that you would maybe rub or scratch your hands or other parts of your body. That is a stereotypical way that people illustrate an increased level of anxiety. And the same goes for number six, touching your face, nose, ears, or hair. This behavior draws a lot of attention because the other person is usually looking at the person's face already. I was watching an interview with this pro-communist philosopher the other day that somebody recommended. He has a habit of touching his nose. It's a small but very distracting habit. Some viewers have even suggested to me that this shows that he's not an entirely honest person. Now, I have no reason to believe he is dishonest, but that's the impression it can create among a certain percentage of people who are distracted by this type of behavior. If you do either of these last two behaviors, fidgeting with your hands or touching your face or hair, then one thing you can do is to occupy your hands. You put your hands in a relaxed position and keep them there. Some people call this a home base. You could loosely clasp your hands in front of you on the table, or if there's no table, you can just put them in your lap and rest them in a relaxed way. So if you find yourself then fidgeting, you just go back to that home base and remember that position. Number seven is gaze aversion. This means somebody appears as if they don't want to look you right in the eye. This is one of those nonverbal cues that many people consider almost proof that somebody's lying. The idea is the other person feels guilty and doesn't have the courage to look the other person in the eye, or they are looking around the room using their imagination, trying to think something up, think of something to say. The truth is people avoid eye contact for all sorts of reasons. It could be social anxiety, it could be cultural, Still, if you have trouble with eye contact for whatever reason, and you're talking to somebody from the US, realize that we prefer direct eye contact. The rule of thumb is to make eye contact with the other person about as often as they are making eye contact with you. Number eight is leg movement. This could be bouncing your leg up and down or flapping your knees back and forth. This looks nervous. Like most of the other behaviors we're talking about, it doesn't look settled or comfortable. It looks like you're ready to run away. This is one of the many behaviors viewers pointed to in an interview with Sam Bankman Freed, the founder and CEO of FTX, the controversial crypto exchange company. He's been accused of fraud and money laundering. He has a habit of visible leg movement. In one interview on NBC News, the camera showed his legs a few times and one leg was visibly shaking up and down. It was really distracting. At one point, you can even see that his chair is shaking because his leg is shaking so much. Some viewers pointed to his leg movement and many other nervous behaviors, and they took that as almost proof that he was a generally dishonest person and probably guilty of what he's been accused of. If you have this habit, the obvious solution is to simply plant your feet in a flat way on the floor or in another position so you can't easily move your feet or legs around out of habit. Number nine is shifting our posture. This could be done when we're standing or seated in a chair. It could be simply swiveling a bit too much in one of those chairs that spins. Shifting our posture is usually a sign that we are physically uncomfortable. In the same way, many onlookers will interpret a shift in our posture as a sign that we are uncomfortable with the words we are saying or the topic, especially if we shift our posture when we are asked a difficult question. Just like shaking of the leg, the key to this is get in a comfortable posture or a seated position that you can maintain and then resist the temptation to swivel if you're in that type of chair. Number 10 is incongruency. This is all about a mismatch. It could be an incongruency in what we say. So we contradict ourselves in some small or large way. It could also be an incongruency whereby we say one thing, but we signal another. We might say the words, I'm fine with our words, but our body language and facial expression clearly shows we are not fine. This type of mismatch is called nonverbal leakage, believe it or not. Now, it doesn't signal that somebody's lying, but onlookers will tend to believe our nonverbal cues over our words, and they're very confused by the mismatch. So if I say it like this, I'm fine. Do you believe my words, or do you believe that my nonverbals are telling the truth? 
Most people would say, I don't care what you said, I can tell you are definitely not fine because of how you acted. So your goal is to be congruent and consistent in your communication. Don't send mixed signals. It confuses other people and it will cost you credibility. Let's look at this list again. Use this as a checklist. Your first step is to identify any behaviors that you want to get rid of. Do you personally have a habit of doing any of these? If so, you can use some of the quick tips we mentioned to prevent yourself from doing them. But if this is an ingrained habit for you, it will take practice to get rid of it. See the description below this video for other resources, including a free PDF download of the top five communication skills that every professional should have. I'll also put a link to that deep dive video about how the research on so-called nonverbal signs of deception is totally bogus. And feel free to leave a comment below and say hello. Until next time, thanks, God bless, and we'll see you soon.